This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can visit their store by using my referral link in the description below. Hi everyone, I'm Nita Hone, and today is Monday, and that means it's time for another MTG Top 10, the series where I rank cards based on their historical performance at Magic's highest level of competition, and today we're going to take a look at 0-2 Creatures. Last week I took a look at 0-1 Creatures, and it made for an interesting list since the stat line is obviously really bad, but there are lots of great 0-1s out there. That's pretty much the same for 0-2s. Obviously it is a little bit better than 0-1, but if your card had that stat line and didn't know anything else about it, it doesn't really get anywhere close to being a card you want to play. However, if you can tack on some additional effects and the 0-2 happens to be very cheap, you can actually end up with a very powerful card, even if it doesn't attack or block especially well. To be eligible for this list, a card had to have a power of 0 and a toughness of 2. In all, there are 69 0-2 creatures in Magic, and in this video we'll take a look at the 10 that have left the biggest impact on competitive Magic. Before we get started, here's a quick reminder on how I score cards in these videos. A first tier top 8 is worth 2 points, this includes events like Pro Tours, and a second tier top 8 is worth 1 point, this includes events like Regional Championships. Alright, let's take a look at the top 10 0-2 creatures in Magic. At number 10, it is Bonded Fetch. This 3-mana 0-2 comes with Defender and Haste, certainly one of the weirder keyword combinations a card has ever had. Because it has Defender, it obviously can't attack, however, it can tap to loot. In other words, you draw a card and then discard a card, and because it has Haste, it can loot right away, unlike most looters. While that effect isn't card advantage, it is a nice thing to have to improve your card selection, and it gets even better if you're interested in taking advantage of cards that are in your graveyard. It gained all of its points in exactly that kind of deck in Standard, where it was played alongside Revelark, a creature that reanimates small creatures from the graveyard. The fetch can help set that up for you so that you can get maximum value ahead of Revelark's trigger. The fetch hasn't gained any points since rotating out of standard. At number 9, it is Gate Creeper Vine. This 2 mana creature is another 0 2 with Defender, but when it enters the battlefield, you get to grab a basic land or gate and put it into your hand. That means this effectively draws you a card when it enters the battlefield, and the card it draws you also tends to be great at fixing your mana. Gate is a land subtype that has been around since Return to Ravnica, but it is the more recent gates from Commander Legends 2 that have led to gate decks emerging in Popper, a format made up entirely of commons. The deck ends up having really great mana for a format that isn't really known for that, and it also uses powerful gate payoffs like Ceruli Gatekeepers and Basilisk Gate. The gate deck is a very real presence in Popper right now, and the vine is a big part of making them functional, so it's likely to keep gaining points in the future. At number 8, it is Incubation Druid. This 2 mana 0 2 can tap to add 1 mana of any color to your mana pool. That already makes for a pretty good card, but it also comes with Adapt. This means you can pay 3 generic and 2 green to give it 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters, so it doesn't stay a 0 2 forever. More importantly, it also gains the ability to tap for 3 mana of a single color once it has those counters. One nice thing about the Druid is that you can use its own mana to pay for the ability, so it's a little easier to get going than it might look at first. Incubation Druid gained all of its points in ramp decks while it was in standard, and so far it hasn't been played in any other 60 card formats. At number 7 it is Core Spirit Dancer. This 2 mana 0 2 loves auras. It gets plus 2 plus 2 for each one attached to it, and it draws you a card every time you cast one. This helps offset the downside of slapping a bunch of auras on the Spirit Dancer, because it means if your opponent does find a way to kill her, you've still gotten a lot of cards back. Unsurprisingly, the Spirit Dancer has been played in decks that play a whole bunch of auras in both Historic and Modern. It hasn't gained any points so far in 2023, but if an aura deck emerges in either Modern or Historic, it's likely to gain more points. At number 6, it is Devoted Druid. Like Incubation Druid, it's a 2-mana 0-2 that can tap for mana. In this case, it can only tap for green, but you can also put a minus 1 minus 1 counter on it to untap it, meaning you can get more than 1 mana out of it in a single turn if you want to. Devoted Druid has gained all of its points in modern decks that combine it with Vizier of Remedies. This combo allows you to just keep tapping and untapping the Druid since it never gets a minus one minus one counter, so you can make as much mana as you want and win the game. This is an impressive two card combo, and it's especially powerful in decks running cards like Collected Company or Court of Calling because you can easily search up whichever piece of the combo you need. The combo has also gotten a very recent boost too with Tyvar Jubilant Brawler now allowing the deck to combo off the turn you play the Druid. It's likely to keep gaining points in modern going forward. 
And number five, it is Hedron Crab. This one mana 0-2 mills three cards every time a land enters the battlefield under your control. For most of its history, the crab has not been used to mill out an opponent. Instead, where the crab has really excelled is in decks where you use it to mill yourself. It does a great job of stocking your graveyard if that's what you're interested in. It didn't see any play in blockers standard, which makes sense. Those formats don't tend to have powerful graveyard shenanigans. The crab gained its first points back in 2009, with all four of those points coming in extended dredge decks. These decks are built entirely around getting cards in the graveyard and then getting tons of value out of them. However, after that success and extended in 2009, the Crab went a full decade before gaining some more points, and they came in 2019 largely as a result of the printing of the super busted Hogak, who made dredge decks in Modern and Legacy even more insane. The Crab could help you power out Hogak absurdly early by both milling cards and by being able to be tapped for Convoke. Hogak was, of course, ultimately banned in Modern, but in Modern's more recent history, the Crab has finally started being used to mill out opponents. This has come about largely as a result of Tasha's hideous laughter, as well as the more recent Jace the Perfected Mind. Mill decks are very well positioned in Modern right now, so I think the Crab is going to gain more points. At number 4, it is Hornet Nest. This 3-mana 0-2 has Defender, but when it gets dealt damage, you create that many 1-1 green insect creature tokens with flying and death touch. Those tokens are no joke, as every single one of them is capable of trading with any creature of your opponent's, and if you get enough of them, they can also really threaten your opponent in the air. This means that attacking into the nest can be a very dangerous proposition, as it is one of the scariest chump blockers in the entire game. It saw a ton of sideboard play in Standard, where it was used against aggro decks, since it had a very hard time finding a way to deal with the nest effectively. Keep in mind it doesn't just count combat damage, so typical red removal spells don't really work effectively on the nest either. It's played a similar role in Modern and Pioneer, where it has sporadically shown up in sideboards over the years. It's likely to gain more points going forward, but not at an especially high rate, so it isn't very likely to move up the list, especially because the top three cards on the list are all way ahead of it, like our number three card... Gilded Goose. This one mana 0-2 flyer creates a food token when it enters the battlefield, and you can tap the goose and sacrifice a food to make one mana of any color. It can also generate food tokens for one generic and a green. This suite of abilities basically makes Gilded Goose into a mana dork that can also gain you life in many situations, and that's a great card to have, so it's no surprise that it has seen significant play in every format but Vintage. While the bulk of its points did come in Standard, it's also seen significant play in Pioneer, where it shows up in Simic aggro decks, and in Modern, where it's been played in Food decks, and in Historic, where it's played in Jun Sacrifice, and in Legacy, where it's played in Bug Midrange. It's going to continue to gain points, but so are the two cards in front of it, like the number two card... Ornithopter. I don't know about you, but when I think of the 0-2 stat line, this is the first card that comes to mind. Ornithopter costs no mana and comes with flying. It's a very old magic card, originally printed way back in 1994, but it didn't see competitive play until the release of Mirrodin about a decade later. That block featured tons of artifact payoffs, more than there had ever been. Most notably, there was Affinity for Artifacts, which automatically made any zero mana artifact way better, as it could reduce the cost of many of your spells very early in the game. In addition to that, both Arcbound Ravager and Cranial Plating could turn the Ornithopter into a very real threat. As a result of all of that, Ornithopter has been featured in Affinity decks in Block Standard, Modern, and Extended. More recently, it's found success in Modern's Hammer Time deck, which is all about quickly putting equipment on your creatures. One of the deck's main ways to do this is Pure Steel Paladin. Ornithopter helps you quickly get metal craft going and also happens to be a good place to put Colossus Hammer, the main equipment the deck uses to win the game. Ornithopter has received many reprints over the years, and this has also given it legality and standard a few more times, as well as in both Pioneer and Historic. In Standard and Pioneer, it's been combined with cards like Tempered Steel and Insole Artifact that make it a much more relevant threat. Insole Artifact lets you turn it into a 5-5 flyer on turn 2, and it can often attack right away provided you played it on turn 1. Ornithopter is likely to continue to gain points in multiple formats, and it has a chance to eventually pass the number one card on the list, though it is going to be close. And that card is Jace Vryn's Prodigy. This double-faced card represents the moment when Jace became a Planeswalker, so on the front, he's a 2-mana 0-2 creature who can tap to loot. Part of that ability checks to see if there are 5 or more cards in your graveyard, and if there are, he transforms into a Planeswalker. Once transformed, he's Jace Telepath Unbound. He has a plus one that makes a creature get minus two, minus zero until your next turn, a minus three that lets you cast an instant or sorcery from your graveyard, and a minus nine that gives you an emblem that lets you mill five cards from an opponent's deck every time you cast a spell. 
Jace has been particularly well suited to decks that can quickly load the graveyard to transform him and or are interested in doing things with spells. He was played in standard control decks and has also found success in modern legacy and vintage Delver. He's gained points in pioneer decks like Demir Inverter and Demir Control. Jace is likely to gain more points going forward, though over the last few months, Ornithopter and Gilded Goose have been busier, so the top three on this list is likely to change in the not-so-distant future. So those are the top 10 zero twos in Magic. If you want to own any of these high-powered, low-power creatures, check out the description where you can find a direct Card Kingdom link for each card that appeared in the video. If you want to make sure you catch future videos, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to catch up on past videos, including many more that look at creatures' stat lines, you should see a playlist on your screen shortly. Thanks for watching.